Ta-da! All right. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you all for coming aboard uh, with uh, the Garlic Salon software, uh, bringing you the profitable salon owner. Uh, and of course, we are the two blondes with passion. Um, Catherine there is on your right. That's me on the left. And uh, you will notice I put the names under the. Oh, that right. was very. That was very. <laughs> that's a new addition. I like that. Oh, there you I, go. I missed that. <laughs> And you can see that we are holding up our books, which uh, brought us all to, to where we are right now, helping salons and salon owners get profitable fast. Because you know what, you guys, you're working in a really tough industry. And one of the things that Catherine and I have found over the years of working with all these incredible business people is that we often open our businesses with the idea of bringing beauty to our neighbors and our communities. But what we often forget about is that we are running a business. And in the end, You're here. it is about earning money, yeah. making a living, right? And that's what we really want to help all of you do is create a great mm -hmm. living for yourself. And uh, actually today's topic is a fabulous topic about earning money. Yeah, about salon events and how to have profitable salon events. Um, so we'll... Get right into it, Eileen, because it's, it's a pretty big topic. Well, it is, and I think it's something that um, we neglect on a regular basis, um, the value of having in-salon events. Yeah, uh, and, and you know what I hear oftentimes? It's because, oh, they're just so cumbersome to plan, and, you know, people just don't know where to start. So we're here to help you kind of put a plan in place to have maybe – Start with one event a year. Maybe you could do two or three a year as, as you move along and, and and become more proficient at doing these. Well, one but, of the things that you and I have discovered over the last little while is that that uh, dreadful phrase. Oh, we did that once. Yeah, and it didn't it work. Didn't work. So they're never going to do it so, again. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't be one of those people. Sometimes you try something. A lot of times you try something. And it doesn't work for whatever reason. But, you know, you go back, you gather more information, and you start and you think, well, what could I do a little bit differently next time? So next time's a little bit better. The time after that becomes better. Because I will tell you, that's really what happened in my own salon. We planned, I had events for years and years and years, and we slowly but surely honed them into, you know, really profitable parts of our, our um business strategy. So that's what we want you to look at these events as is part of your business strategy. Now what what kind of events are we going to do? Well there's all kinds of events. You I, know I like that. And you know there's customer appreciation events. Well okay well let's just talk about customer appreciation because um you know, you and I were talking earlier um about an experience uh, one of our kids had with their yoga studio. Oh, yeah. right? And uh, um, after practicing at a particular yoga, 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 maybe yogurt studio, but it really was a yoga studio, um, for three years faithfully. I mean, she goes six or seven times a week. Oh, yeah. She's a, a major practitioner. and uh, But she got an invite to a new um, yoga studio. So off she went to try it out. And she told me over the weekend, she said, well, you know what, Mom? I really feel like the the studio that I was going to really didn't appreciate my business. Ah. Ah. So right? after all this time, nothing, you know, they hadn't done anything to they, try and nope. say thank you to nope. retainer to... Nothing. And you know what? It's a, it's a really well-known studio in our city, and uh, they really do very, very little customer appreciation. In fact, I never heard of them doing anything at all. And I think it's something that we're really missing, you guys. I think that we have to really think about all the clients that walk through your door. What are you doing to tell them how much you appreciate their business? Yes, but the other part of it is I see lots of people having customer appreciation events. And that's, that's exactly what they do. They appreciate their clients, which is really what we want you to do. But we also want you to make it a profitable event for yourself instead of a party with nothing behind it. Behind it. Right. You know, That's so why we really want you to, to sit down and lay out some plans and really figure out what it is that you're going to do and how you're going to do it yeah. rather than just say, oh, yeah, let's, let's throw a party. Yeah. 
you can throw a party, but let me let us teach you how to throw a party that and is going to benefit you. And make money. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So and there's, you know, Christmas time. Thanksgiving in the US is huge, in fact probably even bigger than Christmas sometimes. So there's lots of different holiday events that you can look at building an event around. Exactly. You know, using that as kind of your focal point and building an event around. We'll give you examples of a few things as we go through um, even, you know, uh, flyers that have been made and we'll share all that information with you. And you know what I, I don't see enough of are things like educational events, like a blow dry event if you have a salon. Oh, you know, absolutely. Those types of things, a makeover event. Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways that you can do educational events because, again, you know, we take our skills for granted. And, but to your client, you are really the, the hair and beauty gods you are in charge of their beauty and most of them really do not know how to hold a brush and do a round brush. Most of them don't know how to make their, their flat irons work um, or curling iron. And most of them don't have the right brush. Or, and most of them don't even have the right products to use. I mean it's amazing. Yeah. So they want the information that you have and because we often neglect when they're in our chairs to share all that information with them, don't get me started on retail, um, <laughs> You know, the educational event does so much to help you overcome that. Yeah, absolutely. So educational events, makeover events, we're just giving you some information. You can mull this over and think about what would work for for your company. Um, informational evenings. So, for instance, Eileen and I are very, right now, very big into promoting trichology, which is the science of the scalp. Well, something like that, you really need to give people information because they really don't understand it. Right. So uh, an information type of event is a perfect venue to be able to um, share your expertise yes. and, and perhaps bring, you know give information out to your clients on something new that you're doing in the salon. Uh, informational evenings are just a, a great way to, again, see your clients in a different uh, way, to invite them something, to, to uh, build that relationship, but uh, they're an awesome way to hold an event. And product launch, you know, if you have a makeup line that comes out with seasonal promotions, it's a great way to invite your clients in to do, to see the new product. So, or a brand new product is coming into the marketplace, you know, that's a great venue to be able to do an event around a product launch. For sure. Like, you know, for example, um, say the product line that you're that you're working with is bringing out a brand new uh, color protect line, right? Uh, what a great way to focus on color in the salon or um, highlighting and, and to launch your new product. Yes. And and remember, when we're talking to you, we're not just talking to salon owners that have large salons. We're talking to you as an individual. We're talking to small salons. Anyone can do this. And I think we all should have these things. If you're, if you are a one person salon, you can do this just as easily as if you're a 50 person salon. Exactly. In fact, probably easier. If, yeah, in lots of ways it's easier for, you know, all that's going to change perhaps is the, the size and the number of people that you're, that you're going to work with. Yeah. Right now, but the same rules apply. Now, fundraisers. Um, I do believe as businesses we should get be behind a cause. Um, not every single cause that comes along, but you should pick what your charity is going to be. And if you're doing anything, it, there should be some link to that charity for sure as you as you move through it. Because I, you know, and we we've, we've done a newsletter on this where you get we get so many requests for yeah. money. You can't give to everyone, but we all can choose one charity to do something. And it to might help. be something local in your community that you feel really passionate about. We have a, a salon owner friend who's passionate about the SPCA, so that's their their go-to uh, fundraising support. So you know you find something that that you really want to work with, and and you become also known for that, and it really makes a difference. But I do want to caution you something on fundraiser because I, I got to tell you this drives me a little crazy, and I saw this the other day is. Um, uh, cut-a-thons and all these where 
where salons or spas give away all of their services. So what happens is the clients come in and uh, they give away or they donate to the to the fundraiser. But what you've done now is you've given away your business for the next six weeks because now they don't need a service then for, for a certain amount of time. So we can't operate that way. As much as we want to give back and give to the community, we also have a business to run. So here's what I would suggest is that when you're doing a fundraiser, make sure you use the words, a portion of the proceeds will go to such and such. Please don't give away your business. Yeah, yeah. I know it's from the bottom of your heart, but you still have to earn a living. I completely agree with you, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's move on. So these are all the types of events. And there's, there may be more that you can think of, but those are just some examples that we're giving you today. So your ultimate goal is sales. <laughs> exactly. But I, you'd be surprised how many people I ask that question of, you know, when they're talking about doing a customer appreciation event, and they, I say, and your ultimate goal of the event is, and they'll go, well, you know, just to say, to say thank you. Absolutely. You want to say thank you to make people feel special, but at the same time, we are going to plant seeds. Right. And if you, if you actually go back to the, um, you know, that, that list that we just had, if you think about it, uh, customer appreciation, Christmas holiday, all of these things is in the end, what we want to do is build business and business is selling. And as, as hard as it is for all business owners sometimes to understand is that you are business people and you do not move forward without selling your service or your product. So, therefore, building that relationship mm -hmm. is a selling relationship and we have to build sales. I completely concur. I had an interesting chat with a, with a sales rep I was training recently and I said, well, you know, tell me, what do you think selling it? She says, well, she said it's um, it's uh, um, selling products. And I said, okay, well, what's selling products? She said, well, it's closing the sale. And I said, but really, what is selling? And really, the answer is selling is about relationship. Mm -hmm. Nobody buys anything without a relationship. Some form of relationship. Exactly. So when we say your ultimate goal is sales, we are also saying your ultimate goal is building a deeper relationship. relationship. Excellent point, Eileen. I like that one. Indeed. So we're going to basically take you through the fundamentals of event planning today. So a basic overview of what you need to do and how you need to start um, planning your event. Now, this we for anybody that wants it, at the end, you can send us uh, an email and ask us for the PDF of um, of this uh, presentation and we'd be happy to do that because it will has kind of all the points on it. So just let us know. Do not type it in on the thing the body on the on the side here because uh, that doesn't when we close this off we don't get, we don't see the information but you'll see at the end we have our email address so you can send us a note and then we'll have your email address and send you back information. There you go. So we're going to give you the go through the fund, fundamentals of how you Ooh, plan an event. Isn't that great? And put the F-U-N in quotation marks. Yeah. Fun. Fundamentals. Because it should be fun. It should be fun too. It's work but it should be fun. Fun work. Yeah. There you go. So number one, the event. What is it? It's an event. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of event is it going to be? So that's your very first thing that you have to decide. You know, is it a customer appreciation? Exactly. Is, what, you know, what category does it fall yeah, into? Is it a grand opening? Like, what kind of event is it? So that's your very first role. And then you have to decide who will attend. Now, do you want to open it to all of your clients? Are you trying to target a specific segment of your client base? Really think about this. For sure, because like if you're doing a makeup event, obviously you're probably not going to target your male clients, right? Mm -hmm. So that means you're going to weed out and, uh, you know, send invitations to your female clients. Yeah, and, and you can do that on your Vigaro system. You have the capability of going in and Choosing. selecting yeah. who you're going to send 
who you're going to send this out to. Oh, you know, and that's actually, when I think about, um, you know, dividing up the genders, right, is don't forget that really powerful events can be men's only events. You know, like, um, uh, I've had a couple of salons do really, really successful Valentine's events for men where they actually come in and buy things for their wives too. Yeah. Right? So, uh, don't forget our men out there, okay? And then you have to think about how many you would like to attend. Now, the reason this is on, on here is it's one of my pet peeves that, I, and I, I, I've talked to salon owners over and over again. You know, <clears throat> they want, they would love to see 50 people show up at their event. How many invitations do they send out? 50? Yep. How many do they get? Uh, 10, 5. 5 to 10? Yep. Right? So here's the general rule of thumb. If you want 50 people, you have to send out 500 invitations. We're looking at about roughly 10% will actually show up. So you need to really spread your wings on yep. this, right? If you want 10 or 12 people to show up, then send out like 100 to 150 invitations. And, you know, all, usually I always recommend that you ask for an RSVP. Yes, because so that, that way you get an idea. Then have an idea of how many people are going to show up at this thing. Uh, and I've had so many people say, I had one salon owner say to me, oh, no, but Catherine, I can't send it. What if I got too many people <laughs> that came? And I went, Great, more power to you. You would find some place to put them, you know. But that usually isn't the problem. No, it usually exactly. isn't the problem. And then again, you know, after you get to that, what is the main purpose for the event? So you need to think, what is your purpose for the event? Sales. Exactly. Please don't forget that in the end, we are looking to uh, build our business, we're looking for sales. I know we keep hammering at home, but right. we do it in nice ways. <laughs> <laughs> so the theme for the event. So every good event should have some kind of theme. You know, is it fall? Is it spring? Is it Christmas? Is it Thanksgiving? Mother's Day, Father's yeah, Day, Easter. You know, I mean, the, the list is endless. But I do have to tell you that Kath and I went to a grand opening um, oh, about a year or so ago, right? And uh, the owner of the of the salon, the theme was sweetness. Yeah. And uh, he had a candy bar and a dessert bar. It was fabulous. Kath and I were in our absolute glory. It was just, it was such a great. Uh, well, I was in, thing. I was really in my glory because they had prosecco, so I yeah. was really happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, and, if you're inviting Kath anywhere, please have prosecco. Yeah. And the other part of that is, you know, I think a couple of glasses of wine always helps people open their wallets. I think so, too. It's a it's wallet like, opener. It's a wallet opener. I was just going to say it was a candle yeah. opener, but a wallet no. opener yeah. is even better. You can't you yeah. can't serve too much. And again, you know, you have to think about, will you be serving food or drinks? I think yeah. I just want to back up. Oh, you want to back up? Yeah, because you just said uh, you can't serve too much. You actually can serve too much. You must be actually. Well, I meant you can't. You have to be careful. You yeah. can not to over serve somebody. <laughs> but a couple of a couple of glasses right. is not going to happen. Honestly, one glass for me is is definitely a wallet opener. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to think about will you be serving food or drink? Because I mean that is going to you know change how you have to lay things out. Um, Will there be a guest speaker? And, you know, it's amazing how powerful a guest speaker can be, especially, for example, well, in fact, no matter what it is that you're doing, somebody who will actually get up and address people, it gives them a focus, it gives your evening a focus. It's really a very powerful mm -hmm. tool to use. Yes, it is. And uh, we're certainly going to show them later a flyer that um, that you brought along today that talks about a guest speaker and, and how powerful it is. So. Yes. And usually if you have someone there that is viewed as an expert, you know, because when they know you and you're there all the time, yeah, they may look at you as the expert, but somebody from outside oh, yeah. is like, oh, my. Here's, you know, the, here's the definition of an expert. Somebody from 50 miles away. Yeah. You know, like, or, it's or like 500 you, feet. Exactly. It's like you and I in our own town. Nobody cares. We go to we go to the other city people say, Oh my sorry, Aiden and Catherine we get so excited, almost feel like a celebrity or something. But it's so true, you know, an expert is somebody from fifty miles away. Yeah. 
And then think about what would be a good slogan for the event. For sure. And, you know, like we've been working with a great slogan uh, in uh, bringing trichology into the forefront, and that's uh, uh, beautiful hair begins with a beautiful scalp. So, you know, look for a little slogan that you can use, a little catchphrase, because it's really, it, it can be really powerful. Yeah. So we've covered the theme for the event. That's step two. Step three, important, is the timeline. Oh, this is uh, highly important because um, we really do have to start looking at promoting this event at least six weeks out. So, but, that's having, the, but that's having everything ready. That's oh, having yes. the flyers ready and yes. everything ready. So we need to start thinking about this event uh, at least 10 weeks before we want to start promoting it. For sure. And that's why we're so excited about having this webinar today because you now have time to plan a phenomenal Thanksgiving or um, Christmas event in, in the United States or whatever. And we're, we're going to talk about a great November um, uh, event that you hold in Winnipeg, which I think is really, really powerful as well. So you've got time, and we really want you to think about this to figure out before you leave today what event is, is going to do. Start making your notes right now. Yeah, and I, mean, I think it's really important. When will the event take place? You know, is it, are you going to do it on a weekday? It depends on your client base. For sure. You know, uh, if you have a lot of business women, well, they're not going to be able to attend them on a weekday. Yeah. You know, are you going to have it on a Sunday? Again, let's go back to how fantastic the Vigaro system is because you can use that as a uh, weeding out process because when you collect information and load it into your program, all of this will come out. It will tell people, you know, like what your clients do for a living, you know, so you'll know that, um, you know, like if you've got a, a huge professional clientele, evenings are much better. If you're if you're catering to the what I call the money market, you're going to know that perhaps during the day is going to be a good time. Absolutely. No, so you, you, you have to know your client base. And again, what we usually look for is we usually try and, and find an, an evening during the week, and it's one of our quiet evenings. Like, I don't, we don't want to give up one of our really busy evenings right. where we know that, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays are our big money producing evenings. I'm not going to cut that off. You know, I'm going to look at my other days, Monday. Wednesday, and I'm going to decide which one of those it would be. Exactly. So, so, so you need to do a little research here, right? And really think about it. And use the information at your fingertips. And that makes it really easy. Yeah. It takes all the guesswork out. So as we said, you have to start pr promoting this event at least six weeks out from the, from the date. So you want to, you know, start working backwards. But then you have to start thinking about it 10 to 12 weeks before the event happens. Um, so now it's premium time to think, get thinking, your thinking cap on because, you know, we're looking at November, the end of November is U.S. Thanksgiving uh, or Christmas. We don't have that much time left. So now is the premium time to start thinking about putting a great event together. Uh, you need to be ready for everything to go to print and start promoting six weeks out from your date. Yeah, and a, and a little further on, we'll, we'll talk about what you're going to be doing over those six weeks. Because really, once you've got all the planning done, really, the rest is quite easy in the, in the build-up. Yeah. No, and I mean, we have seen people uh, put an event together really quickly with not a lot of timeline. Your your numbers will probably definitely not be as good as, as if you've given yourself some time to really think about it and plan it. Alrighty, so what's your budget? You know, some people may have a decent sized budget, some people may have literally a very tiny budget to do this on. So, you know, you have to think about if you're going to do food, what that would look like, mm -hmm. how much that would cost. And really, I'm going to tell you, fruit and cheese platters are probably as much as you need. Really, and honestly, you can, and you know, if you do have a really small budget, you can do so much of it this yourself when it is something as yeah. simple as, as a fruit and, and cheese. And if you're catering to women, it's really almost all you need. Maybe throw in a couple miniature cupcakes or something. Or how about some fudge? Oh, yes, I love fudge. Oh, something sweet. And, of course, we can't forget the Prosecco. Sorry, Kat, yeah. what was I thinking? Beverages. <laughs> Beverages. So, you know, so you have to think about that. If you're going to serve some wine, how much that's going to cost you, you have to factor in that that number. 
Um, and then I'm going to let Eileen talk about this because I think her being in a distributor sales consultant uh, in her previous life, um, <laughs> this is this is very much much part of her scope and that's basically a buy-in of any special promotion. For sure and I think you'll find that probably every single manufacturer that you represent or uh, have in your salon is going to have some kind of a promotion, either a monthly promotion, a seasonal promotion or whatever. If you're holding a larger event, phone up your distributor and say, hey, what have you got in the warehouse that uh, you're looking to find a home for? Because you can often, you know, if you're buying a, a substantial amount, you can often find a great deal in the, in, the, in the warehouse. And again, here's where it comes in and having a relationship with your uh, sales rep or your salon consultant, yeah. right, and your distributor. It's all about building relationships. So believe me, your distributor and salon consultant want to have a relationship with you because you're the one that they're selling to. Yeah. So it, it all sort of goes around in, in full circle. And also, which reminds me, is um, if, you, if you, especially if you're a focus salon, ask your sales rep or your salon consultant to come and be part of your event because they can really help you. Ask them for, for product giveaways. Um, ask them to be of as much help as possible. But the main thing is, is find out what they've got on sale so that you can figure out how you're going to uh, have the budget to buy it. You figure out well, how much money you want to make, and then you move forward with that. And that's the important thing is to really figure out what you want to sell. Yeah, well, and basically, you know, you take a lesson from grocery stores and have a lost leader. Exactly. You know, and, and, oh, I gotta, I gotta say this because one of my pet peeves, Kat, over the 20 years or so, right, of watching salon events, and they, I have a salon, I say, well, I'll have six of those. <laughs> Believe me, six of something is not gonna cut it. Campbell's, the Campbell Soup Company, yeah. are incredible merchandisers, and their rule of thumb is you need 18 of a product to sell one of them because you have to have a powerful display. So here's my advice when it comes to buying special promotions from your distributor is buy lots, but have a deal with them to say whatever doesn't sell, I'm sending back to you. With no restocking. With no restocking fee. Because you're going to do it in a very short period of time. And if you do it well, you'll be surprised really at how much you sell out. They're, most of the times, they're going to be really happy to work with you because they'll think they'll probably end up keeping most of what they buy. And it's true because we often have, with a, with a good showing, we have a great sell-through. And sometimes there's only a few left and the, and the salon owner wants to clear them out. Yeah, for so, sure. yeah, there's so many ways that you can you can do this. And we'll get into that a little bit further down, but I mean, there's lots of advice we can give you on that. And then again, you, you're you going to think included in your budget are any licenses that you may need to may need to buy or pay for. And in some states, I know in some provinces, provinces in Canada, you should have a special event liquor license if you're doing these things. I know in Manitoba, it is not very expensive. Um, it was, you know, maybe 50 bucks for the night. Well worth it, maybe yep. even less than that. Um, and then if we bought our our wine from the liquor store, whatever was not opened, we could take back. Yeah. So so just check in and see what your uh, local municipality insists on you having. Okay. Quite important. Oh, let's go back. I missed one. Promoting the event. This is the be all and end all. Well, this is really the key to it. Once you once you've put out, you know, decided on when it's going to be and what you're going to do, now we get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. So here we go. You must create some kind of flyer, you yes, know, sir. that speaks to the, the event. We have some examples to show you as we go down. Uh, so create a flyer. Then you want to post your flyer on your website. You want to post it on Facebook. And you want to put the flyer throughout your salon. You want to have it up in the salon. You want to make sure you have it in your bathroom. Remember, you have a captive audience there. At every station. Every station at the front desk. You want to use the flyer as bag stuffers. So you want to make sure that, you know, when people are buying retail, you're putting a flyer into their bag. Um, you want to put it wherever you can. And you're not just going to, you know, 
so many people just think they can put a flyer up and people will read it. I'm sorry, people don't look. So we need to draw their attention to these things. And when you post it on Facebook, you're not going to post it once. You are going to post it weekly. Exactly. And, and leading, up to the event. leading up to the event. And then the last week, you're going to um, do a countdown. Do a countdown. You're going to post it up uh, probably three or four times. Yeah, so maybe every day. You're going to say, only three days left till our big event, you know. Only, only, only two, two days. days, and it's almost here. And, and just don't forget a, tonight, it's yeah. or today, or yeah. whatever. And the other thing is, is to use your, um, to use your email whenever possible as well. You know, yeah, use, well, use the client in your, in your, um, in your gold mine, which yeah. is your list. And of course, you can do it so easily on Vigaro because you can just send everything out through Vigaro. So it makes it simple for you. Now, create invitations for your top clients. So you're saying, well, why should we do that? when we've already you know created a flyer we're putting on our website putting on facebook you want to make them feel special again go into vigaro and figure out who you're if you have a hundred clients or if you have 200 clients 20 percent of those clients are going to probably be the ones that are spending the most money absolutely so with the 80 20 rule yes. right so, so those those top 40 clients that you would have out of 200, you want to create an invitation and send them out an invitation and in it, the mail. Exactly, and make it special so that it would say, you know, hi Catherine, you know, like I, you know, yeah. really wanted to make sure you knew that we were going to be doing this, right? So it's very, it's very personal, and that client feels appreciated yes. and rewarded. And bring this invitation with you for a special gift. Oh, I love that, Kat. That's a great Bring idea. this invitation yeah. with you for a special gift. Yes. And for those 40 people, you have a gift for them when they come in. Remember, these are your top clients. I can't stress enough how important it is to keep great relationships with those top clients. It's, it's a, that one's a no-brainer, you guys. That one's an absolute no-brainer. Okay, so what other media will you use? Okay, so for example, if you have a local uh, newspaper, yep. um, like there's community newspapers all over yeah. our area, and uh, it's a great way to go because I think you'll find that people still are, are looking to see what's going on locally using their newspaper, and usually it's fairly inexpensive as well, and they don't have to be gigantic ads. Yeah, you could just put a, you know, a small flyer in. eighth of a page or something yeah. um, with your flyer and... Uh, Again, it's just to get it out there. And the reason, you know, we say this, we've seen some success with that with that recently. Um, a center down in uh, Quebec was promoting an event. Um, one, we were at a grand opening a couple of weeks ago. In, was it yeah. two weeks ago? Now? Yeah, two weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago, and um, the lady had posted in her she did an ad in her uh, local newspaper and um, people that she didn't know she'd never seen before came through that door because they had seen it in the newspaper yeah it was a great way to bring in new business really good so you know it can it can, pay, it can really pay for it pay for it yeah so I mean just think about you know what you could use if you're having a fundraiser component with your event Go to the local media because they will sometimes promote you for free. Exactly. Um, if you belong to a church, they often have um, uh, bulletins that uh, you can, you know, put a little posting on their back page or whatever. So there's all sorts of ways to promote um, an event that's coming up. Oh, absolutely. And then solicit prizes. We've already talked about this a little bit, but solicit prizes from distributors and local businesses. So when I talk about prizes, you should always have uh, some form of prize giveaway, whether it's, you know, a, a grand prize. I, we usually have a grand prize, and then we usually have a, a kind of a silent auction thing where we give people tickets, and they can put them in different boxes. And we create those by soliciting from local businesses, uh, from our own uh, manufacturers and distributors, to make up baskets. And you know, Kathy, you do um, 
and we're going to get into the, a couple of the big events that you do. But um, and you have a great uh, relationship with your distributor, and he's happy to open his warehouse up to you to find that special uh, product that you can do a special buy-in, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea of the local businesses, I think, is something that we often miss out on because. Um, Everybody wants to do some cross marketing and some cross promoting, right? Yeah. So you know, if you've got like a um, like a clothing store or whatever, invite them in. Invite them to come to your event. Invite them to bring their business cards, like share, right, and get yeah. them to to do a giveaway because they're going to want to get get their name out there as well. So you can really, really help each other. And they're giving you're giving them access to your clients. Yeah, um, you know, even like to go as far as like catering or whatever, right? Or flowers or anything. Yeah, there's so many. I mean, just look at your local area. There's lots of people that you can cross promote with. And uh, I just, I always say I like people to get out of their business and actually look around. Right. Because it's not until we get outside of our business that we can actually look, look and see the opportunities that are there. If you're stuck in your business the whole time. Um, you're never going to be quite as successful. You really need to get out and look from the outside in. How true is that? So that's just a little bit about how to solicit prizes from distributors and local. I'm trigger happy today. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, so who is managing the event? Yeah. Who's running the show? Who's running the show? <laughs> so uh, you know, so you have to really decide who's going to be the leader for the event. Right, and it doesn't always have to be you. You can you can delegate. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. You can find someone in the salon who who likes to do organizing. You might have a front end person. Um, in fact, I was just talking to a salon over over the weekend who wants to hold an event, and but is you know she's busy as all get out. So you know we found a person in the salon to sort of delegate the responsibility to. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Um, we do quite a few events and, and we don't, it's not always the same person that does them. Now I have my spa, one of my shareholders is runs the spa and she is brilliant at running events. She's over the years, she's honed her skills. So she heads it up, but she has other people that she delegates things out to. So a good manager or a good leader is very good at delegating responsibilities and roles to other people and give them timelines. For example, here's the thing is you might say, um, you know, Eileen, um, we've got um, $200 to spend on catering for this event. Could you please go and uh, source out some ideas for me and I need you to get back to me in 10 days. Exactly. So that would be a perfect way of putting it. But then you need to keep a running log of what the timelines are. Exactly. Who's doing what and what the timelines are. So that's your real responsibility is to manage everybody else that's managing the event. And if you're the only one, well, hey, make your own timeline. Exactly. And hold yourself accountable. I find most people don't hold themselves accountable. Well, the nice thing about a timeline, too, is it breaks up all the chores. You don't have to do everything all on one day. Yeah. You can give yourself a time and say, I need to have this in place by this date. I need to know this information by that date. And so you give yourself a timeline. So coming up, I've just put a few uh, fly, uh, flyers in here that we have created and used throughout the years. Um, <clears throat> so you'll just get an idea. So one of these was our fall makeover event. Uh, so as you see, we have a guest speaker. We give them a bit of information about the product. We kind of lead them through the evening, what that's going to look like. The big thing for me in this whole thing is if you look at the bottom, promotions for this night only. Only, only. Okay, and that word is so important because what you're doing is you're creating scarcity. You're giving people a clue that they need to participate right now yeah so I mean you know they could your promotions could be whatever you want it to be what we're trying to build it are relationships we're trying to build future sales so here's you know the way we're gonna do it so buy two or more Jane products and receive 25% off and receive a gift with purchase one per customer now that gift with purchase 
I don't remember what it was because I didn't put this event together, but it was probably a $10 off um, on your next service. Right. So, you know, I we like to use a lot of things like that. We like to use, if you buy retail, we give you a, a gift towards service. So by forum or Jane okay, product. Just, I just hold on that, that thought because I think that is such a brilliant um, uh, marketing and business idea because within the within your own space, you're cross-merchandising and cross-marketing. Yes. Right? And that's really, really key. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter what we've got here. It's the fact that we, we do it. You know, use Spa Box towards any one eminence product. Purchase tonight only. Um, we have Spa Box that we give away at these events. For every ten dollars you spend tonight, you get an extra ticket for the prize draws. So if you if you have a hundred dollars, if you spend a hundred dollars, you get an extra ten tickets to put in those prize draws. And people line up to get it. And see, look at what the prize draws are for this event. I mean, this was fantastic. Yeah. Right. Well, the, but the prize draws, our prize draws, are usually very, very uh, lucrative. I so love people. that. Well, and a couple other things I want to point out that you've got on this flyer too, Kat, is that you know you've got a guest speaker, right? And uh, she's a local makeup artist, so that tells a little bit about it. You've got a timeline on here and shows what's going to happen throughout the evening. Yep. So it's uh, it's a great way to go. Yeah, and you'll see as a thank you for coming, you'll receive a free gift. I love that. So you know, and it's uh, it has an eighteen ninety five dollar value. So I go for that. Yeah, me too. Trust me, people like giveaways. Well, oh, back again at Trigger Finger of mine. So this was an extremely, our eminence evenings are extremely successful, and it's because Tracy, who is my shareholder who runs the spa, believes 100% in the products that she's selling. It doesn't matter what you're selling, but believe in them, be passionate about them, and she's behind it 110%. She has also honed her skill at putting on these events. When we first started putting on these events, trust me, we didn't have a ton of people, but we kept at it and kept at it. And this particular event, sorry, this particular event, um, I think, in fact, I know, we brought in about $18,000 in two hours Holy. in product Sales. Holy smoly. Sales. And that's product sales. And how many, I'd love to know how many bookings you got out of that too, right? So, you know, we had uh, the founder of the company. Um, he was going to be in town. And this is the invitation we sent out. First 20 in the door get a free gift. You have the opportunity to purchase the latest in skincare. There's a featured gift with purchase opportunities. Future reservation incentive. So you're selling services down the road. Free skin consultations and prize giveaways. Love it. Love simple, it. Simple, simple, simple. Love it. But the beauty of this is actually in the next slide. <clears throat> well, yes, because here we have the, the, uh, this was that evening. We had 120 people show up for this event. It was now. I want you to remember that Catherine said they brought in eighteen thousand dollars from a hundred and twenty people. Yeah. So it, was it worth us putting it on? Holy smoly! Does it take a chunk of work to put an event this size on? Yes, it does. But it doesn't matter. You know, we we're a really big salon, spa, and hair loss center. If you're a small center, you can still do this. A friend of mine in Vancouver. He holds a presentation every, or a, an event every year just before Christmas, and he regularly in that evening in two hours it's ten grand. So it's, it's you don't you know just think about this. I mean like like you know Cass got like sixty five hundred square feet, but if you only got a thousand square feet, then you know think about that in percentages, right? So it, it's you're not going to bring in one hundred and twenty people, but you could probably bring in twenty, right? You, yeah, fifteen or twenty. Yeah. Exactly. Bring them together. Like I said, we, even with the size of space we have, we started small. And it didn't go over the first <laughs> next there the first no. time, right? You know, sometimes we, have, we maybe started with 15, and then we built up, and it was like 40, and then it built up to over 50. Well, now we've capped it. 
because we think we, we really only have space in, in our space for 80 people to kind of it comfortably be in a class. So this was the, but this is the evening that came from that flyer. So if we can do it, you can do it. That's basically I think that just, what I'm saying. No, we do we do these events. Um, Tracy, I think puts three eminence events on a year. Eminence mixed with makeup on a year, and then the other big event we do once a year, and we've talked about it before. And anybody that was on last time saw this flyer, but I, I kind of want to explain a little bit about what we do. So November the 11th in is Remembrance Day here in Canada. So we essentially have to be closed in Manitoba. We have to be closed, or we have to pay our staff double time. Right, because it's a statutory holiday, which really, you know, for us just doesn't really make a lot of sense. So we looked at it, and about four or five years ago, I thought, you know, we should take this day and turn it into a positive. For me, the loss of one day is a lot, but how can we turn that into positive? So now what we do is this is our customer appreciation day before Christmas. I love that. You know, that is, mm. you know, <laughs> in fact, I think we're going to do uh, an article on that whole thing. It's turning um, posit or negatives into positives, and I think it's just such a brilliant idea, and you've done it so well. Did I say negative into positive? Positive or positive into negative? I don't what, remember what, what I said. <laughs> but been, we knew what yeah. you meant. <laughs> been talking too long. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, you know, so this is a very simple formula and template. We have a gift card promo that we put on. Buy three gift cards, get a fourth free. Um, and it, that's it. Buy three gift cards, get a fourth free. One day only. And it says starting at fifty dollars for students <coughs> only. So the cards go in incre increments of twenty five dollars or fifty dollars. Uh, twenty five after, after okay. the fifty. Okay. So the bottom one is so if they buy uh three fifty dollar gift cards, they get the fourth one free, right? If they buy three seventy five dollar gift cards, they get the fourth That's one free. free. If they buy three hundred dollar gift cards, and boy oh boy, how much uh, do you sell? We sell well in this one day. We usually sell between twenty and twenty-two thousand dollars. Did you hear that, people? Twenty to twenty-two thousand dollars in in um, um, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, but also that is dedicated to your business, right? Yep. These people are not going to go anywhere else for their service. You have built you have built an incredible relationship just by doing this. Yeah. So, and I mean, you can see in in our little. Christmas balls here. We have amazing boutique deals for one day only. Yes, and mm -hmm. and here's the thing is uh, um, this uh, salon is Bobcast. They've done an exceptional job of taking retail to the next level. Um, they do have a boutique within the salon. They've moved out of just selling bottles, and uh, you do a fantastic job of. Um, I think last year one of your big sellers was that uh, iPhone charging wallet, which I yeah. thought was a brilliant idea. Um, so they do all sorts of things. Think outside the box. Yeah, you know, we had a celebrity makeup artist doing demos. We had door prizes. We had cake and wine because it was also our six. That was 17 years in business, so that was a couple years ago. Now, uh, I think we're coming up for 18 years now. So, and the first 50 guests receive a free gift. Yes. And you have people lined up, right? lined up oh. outside the door before opening. Wasn't this the one, this particular one, the uh, one with the snowstorm? Yes, it was. Okay, so you got it. It was the first snowstorm of the year, and I woke up in the morning and I thought, great, we're not going to have anybody at our, you know, or we're going to have less people at our event. The interesting thing was there were less people at our event than the year before, but we sold more. Isn't that interesting? Because when they got there, they stayed. Yes. And of course we had wine. Oh, yeah. And we had cake. It was all good. And the longer they stayed, the more they bought. I love that about people. So that, I, I think it's, you know, fairly self-explanatory. I think we all should have at least one event per year in our space. Start with one and then go from there. Exactly. And persevere. Like if you decide that, you know, like you're going to do a Thanksgiving event, um, this year may not be as successful as the one you do next year. 
And uh, But I want you to know that the more you do it, the better your skills are, the better your business gets, the better your relationships yeah. are. It's, it's an incredible way to build relationships and to build your business. And remember, if you have questions, we are, you know, we are at the end of an email. Exactly. Info at the profitable salon owner dot com. And again, I want to remind you all that we, if you would like a copy of this uh, presentation with all the information on it, please uh, send us an email at info at the profitable salon owner dot com and we'll capture your email address and send you back a copy of this PDF. OK, um, don't forget to, to take a look at our website. We're the uh, www dot the profitable salon owner dot com. And uh, Kath and I are passionate about helping you build your business. And also remember that one of your best resources is your Vigaro Salon software. Don't ever forget that, okay? It is, it is every business's best friend. Um, yes, please, Carrie, Carrie ask a question. would like to ask a question. Go ahead. Type. Anybody else have any questions? Because, Feel free because yeah. we have a few minutes left. Da, 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 da. She must still be typing. Yeah, it doesn't give us those, aha. Okay. So I have constant contact. Do I need both the girl and that? Susie, <laughs> over to you. Over to you. Yeah. I love having Susie on it because she's so she's so knowledgeable. Um, and, uh, and she can let you know. Um, anybody else have any questions? Well, we certainly hope everybody enjoyed listening and, about special events. And if you don't do them, um, I encourage you to to get out there and do them. And if you do have events, um, please, I hope you took at least one golden nugget and now can turn your events into profitable events. And yes, Sarah, you're absolutely right. Vigaro does have the uh, gift gift cards. And, oh, Gretchen. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, Gretchen. Thanks, guys. This was really great. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for coming on. And we see um, uh, Jackie. Uh, thank you for coming on today. It was uh, so good to see your name come up. Um, and, Susie, thanks so much for taking care of that. Um, perfect. All right, everyone. We're going to sign off. And, and uh, don't forget that uh, this has uh, been recorded and uh, it is going to be uh, available soon. We'll put it up pretty soon. So thank you all so much. Oh, and don't forget that next month we will be here on, oh my gosh, I think it's, um, what's the second Monday in October? I don't know right off the hop, but it will be the second Monday in October. At 11 o'clock, same time, same place. Hope you're going to join us. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Have Take a great care. day. Bye-bye.